So I'd like to welcome my friend, the informative, the irreverent, but always entertaining, Ann McElhenney. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, brought a, I, I brought my own crowd. You, gotta be, you have to always be sure you have that. Um, this has been quite a week. I, was in, I started on Monday in South Carolina, in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, on Wednesday, I was in McPherson in Kansas. Um, and now I'm in Pennsylvania, and at 2 o'clock, I'm supposed to be getting on a plane for New York, and that's looking very unlikely right now. I'm going to start with something kind of odd. You're going to think this is kind of an odd way of coming at fracking. But I asked audiences in South Carolina and in Kansas a question when I went in and spoke to them. I said, how many of you have heard of Kermit Gosnell? And I asked them to put their hands up. I can't actually see you now, so I can't ask you to do it, but um, I'm presuming here in, in Pennsylvania there isn't a one person in this room who doesn't know who Kermit Gosnell is. But I can tell you that the two groups I spoke to, the ones in South Carolina and the ones in Kansas, had never heard of him. 90% of them had never heard of him. And I think it's very interesting. They'd all heard of Jody Arias, but they'd never heard of Kermit Gosnell. And I'll tell you why I think I'm talking about Kermit Gosnell. For, for all the reasons that anyone in this room who knows who Kermit Gosnell is, for the reasons that have completely stunned all of us, for all kinds of reasons, not, not only the, 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 specific, the specifics of his snipping, but one thing that I think is interesting, particularly because I'm doing this, I've made this film about fracking, and I'm listening to environmentalists talk the usual absolute horse wallop about it, <laughs> is that Kermit Gosnell ran an abortion clinic in Philadelphia, that's one word for it, and for 17 years, no one went to inspect that place, 17 years. 17 years no one went to inspect him. And you've got people here trying to frack wells here with regulations that pile up on the desk like this, and it's not enough regulation, it's not enough inspection. Just remember one thing when you meet environmentalists, it's never, ever, ever about what they say it's about. They are liars. It's never about what they say it's about. It's never about what they say it's about. When complaints were made about Kermit Gosnell, you know what the authorities in Pennsylvania decided to do? The health authorities in Pennsylvania, in their infant wisdom, knowing that that place on every level was a carnal house, was, you, you know, you know, and it's worth reading, by the way, you should read the grand jury. Phelan McAleer, my husband, went to the trial, by the way, in Philadelphia last week and spent days there. I don't know if some of you have read the report he wrote about it. And he went in and he saw those seats, those empty seats those empty seats where journalists thought, that's not a story. And you should watch, and I, I, and I did this, I, I mean, you know, here I am, the fracking girl. I showed the photographs. You should show the photographs. You should show everyone the photographs of those beautiful children. Unbelievable, beautiful, beautiful girl, little girl with her full head of hair. Have you seen the photographs? Yeah, you need to see them. You need to watch them. You need to look at the photographs. They're in the grand jury um, testimony. You need to look at that. And I, 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 I know this must sound so weird. What is she doing talking about Kermit Gosnell? It's never about what they say it's about. That guy was running a health clinic. Don't, you know, environmentalists apparently are really concerned about health. They're not concerned about health. It's not about health. 17 years, 17 years. If you were a Vietnamese woman who just arrived off a boat and wanted to start doing nails in Harrisburg, well, good luck with that. They'll be down on you. You know this. You'll have the inspectors and what's this and what time and what's this now here? Is that dust? And just in Philadelphia, there was a cat walking through a bloody floor. And the toilets were jammed with the remains of the little babies. And the girl who gave evidence yesterday talked about a little baby in a, in a toilet swimming for its life. And another little baby that, you know, you need to read this. You actually need to read this. And NBC don't, NBC don't think it's a story. NBC don't think it's a story. ABC don't think it's a story. God, it's a story. This is the biggest, this is the most prolific serial killer in American history, and it's not a story. And these are human beings. These are, you, you, this is, these are the most beautiful little people, and as a little boy, you should see him. He's like a fully formed, beautiful little boy. Snipping. Snipping is what he called it. Snipping. But that's not a story. 
And environmentalists tell you that they're worried about regulation of the frag regulation. Shut up! That's what I said to them. Shut up! Shut up! And they say, you know, and I'm going to, you know, I just, I'm, I'm obsessed with Kermit Gosnell. I'm just, I'm sure you're, there's people here. It's just, and I, you know, I'm not a pro-lifer. I'm not. But I am, it is, it's, it's, it's breathtaking. It's like something out of, I mean, there's horror movies. Horror movies didn't think up things like that. You know that there was, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm sorry for upsetting you. But there's, there was a shelf, uh, one of the girls working, the anaesthetist was 18, by the way. The anaesthetist was 18. And it's 17 years nobody bought it went and regulated it. And you try and frack a well here. My God, they're all out in arms. It's never about what they say it's about. It's never about what they say it's about. Never, 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 never. They hate America. That's what it's about. They hate America. And they hate things that work. You know, because environmentalists say they hate pollution. They don't hate pollution. That is a lie. Where in the world is there pollution? There's pollution in China. You don't see Greenpeace moving their headquarters to China. <laughs> they don't mind communist pollution. It's only free, you know, it's only in a free country that they have a problem, where the, where, where the air is beautiful and people live to be 300. I mean, my God, I can see them in, where I live, in crazy land in California, where you have these 90-year-olds jogging on the beach, it's like, you know, pollution. Oh, shut up, for God's sake. Go and see what it looks like to live in China, where they're making all the, where they're making all the renewable energy stuff. Anyway, I'm getting on to that. They say they care about pollution. They don't care about pollution. Because every solar panel, every windmill requires rare earth. Is rare earth rare? No, sir. Rare earth is not rare at all. It's all over the place, and there's loads of it here in America. Why are we not mining it here in America? because it's super, super polluting. So environmentalists think it's kosher to do the polluting in China. Sure, who cares? There's loads of those Chinese anyway, and sure, they're so concerned about overpopulation, that'll kill off a few more of them. <laughs> it's not about pollution. So it's not about pollution. Now, let's see, what else could it be? If it's not about pollution, what else could it be about? Oh, I know it's about CO2 emissions. They're really, really worried about CO2 emissions because we're all going to die. Now, let's see. So the natural gas business and the fracking has reduced dramatically, like better than any country who signed that silly Coyote whatever, has reduced the CO2 emissions like dramatically, but they still don't like the fracking. They still don't like natural gas. It's meant to be about CO2 emissions. Well, let's see. Is there a reliable energy source that has zero CO2 emissions? Is there? Oh, yes, sir, there is. It's called nuclear power. Guess who doesn't like nuclear power? It's not about what they say it's about. That it's not about CO2 emissions, or they'd love natural gas, and they'd love nuclear power. No, it's not about that. Wait till we see what else they like. They like the renewable energy. Oh, I love the renewable energy. Don't you love the renewable energy? They love the renewable energy. They don't love the renewable energy. They're liars. I'll tell you why. The two most effective renewable energies, the two, are... Incorrect. The two that work best, two that work best, wood, wood and hydro. Guess who hates hydroelectric power? They do. And guess who never even mentions that wood is renewable power? Because guess what? Environmentalists do not know that trees grow. And they say that they love the windmills. Oh, they love the windmills, they love the windmills. Well, here's what I try to calmly say to those Greenpeace fellas looking to sign a petition in Santa Monica with their big beard and their, and their big woolly jumper and their sandals. And I get very, I find it very difficult to be, you know, the refined lady that you can see before you here. <laughs> And they basically, you know, so they love the windmills. And here's what I try to say calmly. And maybe you could do a better job than me because I can't really get this out without starting to scream and look like a crazy girl. <laughs> Listen to me, sir, there. You're loving the windmills. Isn't that just great? How's about copper mining? Are you, are you in favor of copper mining? Because there's a great opportunity for a copper mine in Alaska at the Pebble. And it seems that you're also against that. What about the copper mining? Oh, no, we don't like copper mining. Well, you're an idiot then. 
You're an idiot then, because how are you going to have a wind turbine without copper? You're an idiot then, and you're a liar. So they love the windmills, but they don't love the windmills. And then they say they love the birds. Oh, they love the birds. And they love those endangered birds. And they love the bald eagle. And do you remember all the chat about the bald eagle with DDT? God, we were sick of it while the children died. Well, there's not much chat about the birds now that are getting sliced in two by the windmills. <laughs> not much chat out of them. It's never, ever, ever about what they say it's about. You've got to hang on to that. This is my big, this is my big revelation here. I've 10 years I've thought about this. I only recently worked it out. It's never about what they say it's about. And then they say with the fracking, seismic activity, earthquakes. We're all about to die. Basically, that's the whole thing. By the way, you know, summary of the environmental movement, we're all about to die. Well, you know something? Doesn't look like that to me. Doesn't look to where I'm standing. It doesn't look like that with people living to be 150 and going jogging on the beach. I love it. I think it's great. Seismic activity. Here's what you need to say to the environmentalists who start talking that utter nonsense about seismic activity. You say to them this, again, if you could do it calmly. Good luck with that one. Say to them, you know, should we ban all forms of energy that cause in what they call induced seismicity, human-formed earthquakes? Should we ban all of them? And they'll probably go, oh yeah. Well then, the first one to go is geothermal. Geothermal causes constant, constant, consistent earthquakes. The largest geothermal plant in the world is in Northern California. Now, do you think there's a sensitivity in California to seismic activity? And have you noticed the campaigns by Greenpeace, the Sierra Club, the NRDC, and all that crowd to close that geothermal plant in California? The silence is deafening. It's never, ever, ever about what they say it's about. Never. They're liars. They're hypocrites. They just hate America. And they hate things that work. And they hate the fact that people are free. Because if we're running out of stuff, if there's too many people and we're running out of stuff, they can get back to their communist roots and they can start rationing. Because that's really what they want to do. And they say about fracking, you know, it's not regulated. It's not regulated. I can, the, the regulations are, it's, it's, they're already insane. If you think about mining in America, and I just think this is an incredible statistic, and it really depresses the hell out of me, because I love my iPad. You know, I love the iPad and the computer. You know, it's great. And you know, if you go to one of those environmental conferences where they want to stop everything, they're all there with their iPads. <laughs> and they're so stupid that they don't know that that iPad, that that Apple, was dug out of the ground. And by the way, there was an explosion before that. That's called mining. Everything beautiful in the world comes from mining. Everything gorgeous comes from mining. Washing machines? Washing machines. As I love to say, and I love to say this on college campuses where we can see the liberals go. I love to say I do believe that the washing machine liberated people, liberated women more than the pill. And that drives people completely nuts. They, come, they, they really, you can see their heads start to spin. It's like that scene out of The Exorcist. The hair, the head starts to spin around. They've got the green stuff coming out of the mouth, the whole business, you know. They just hate that. But you know something? If you've ever seen women in India and Africa devoting a career to washing clothes, you might agree with me. And those women should be off their getting their nails done and then curing, finding a cure for cancer, rather than washing clothes. This whole washing machine thing is just the best. It's just the best. Try washing. Has anyone ever washed clothes by hands? Please, God, no. There you go. There's a man over there. Good man yourself. Don't know whatever, don't know whatever happened to him, but it's a very strange story. I think we need to talk to him later. <laughs> and fracking, you know, it's gonna, we're all going to die. We're all going to die. You know that. We're going to die. Before we die, we're going to stop fancying our wife, the dog, it's going to go funny. Every day, there's a new thing that it's causing. Every day. You know how many wells have been fracked in the United States of America? Over a million. Have you noticed the dead bodies? <laughs> have you noticed the dead bodies piling up? Have you noticed the clusters of cancer? Have you noticed that? And I talked in Kansas to a group of oil and gas workers. And uh, I said to them, you know, well, wouldn't that be the great class action lawsuit if they were all sick? They were all sick, because I mean, by God, if they're not close to the fracking sites, nobody is. And they were all sick, and they went after the big oil companies. You don't think that's a good enough idea? Yeah, there's just no evidence, that's the problem. They've been fracking well, a million wells, a million wells, and we're all doing just fine. In fact, we're doing better than fine. 
Woohoo! And by the way, for those of you lucky, lucky people owning land in Pennsylvania in the right spot, oh, lucky, lucky, lucky people. <laughs> and can I say, I'm just a, just a tad bitter and twisted about that myself. Just a little, you know? Um, because one thing I always say to look out for, never, always remember, it's never about what they say it's about. So if you meet a bitter and twisted person who's saying, oh, it's fracking, it's not good, you know, um, there's a good question, you know, and I've got land, and I've got land, you know, and I'm very worried about the land. Ask them that little question, you know, and bring them in. Ask them a question. Do you have the mineral rights? Do you have the mineral rights? Oh, darling, you lost the mineral rights. Did you sell off the mineral rights before you discovered that you had a million dollars under the ground? Ah, listen, sure, I would be bitter and twisted myself. <laughs> and by the way, I'm fairly bitter and twisted anyway, because I actually do think it's amazing for people in North Dakota, here in Pennsylvania, you know, to discover that somebody comes up to their door and goes, I would like to give you a check now for a huge amount of money. And then every month for like 30 or 40 years, you're going to get this beautiful, beautiful royalty check. And they're just sitting in the house going, honey, let's, uh, let's have another bottle of champagne. Let, no, we will. No, we will. Oh, no, go on. I will. I will. I know I will. Seriously. seriously. So don't forget, it's never, ever, ever what, it's, what they say it's about. And this is what this film that we made is about. This is what Frack Nation is about. You need to buy multiple copies of Frack Nation. It's a great birthday present, anniversary, bar mitzvah. Um, it's a great present for that liberal in your life that's driving you completely nuts. And you need to sit down and watch the film with them. But you need to buy multiple, multiple copies. It's what's keeping us on the road, and we really, really need you to buy it. I used to be a socialist but not anymore. I am an outrageous and aggressive capitalist now. So when I leave here, I will be selling aggressively at the door. And I am just about nearly finished. And I'm going to take questions. I'm just trying to think, was there anything else? I was going to say to you in the film, one of the gifts, you know, when you're making films like this, it nearly happens every time to us. There's the gift that keeps on giving. And the gift that keeps on giving in our film, and for those of you who've seen it, how many people have seen it? Loving it. The gift that keeps on giving are Craig and Julie Soutner from Dimmock, Pennsylvania. And here's the thing. You see, it's never what they say it's about. So here's what they said. They said that an oil and gas company had polluted their water, contaminated their water, and they had like, like eczema. Is that what it's called, honey? Is it called eczema? And they weren't feeling well, and on and on and on. Oh, by the way, Craig Soutner was asked what was in the water. And there were two types of weaponized uranium. Now, if the Iraqis knew that, <laughs> if the Iraqis knew that, that they could just get in touch with Craig Sotner of Dimock, Pennsylvania, you would have, you know, because there's a whole thing about getting weaponized, weaponized uranium. And you know how awful journalists are? Journalists interviewed those people. Craig and Julie Sotner have been interviewed around the world. They were on Japanese TV. You think any journalist would bother, would bother to ask them the follow-up question? You what? Weaponized uranium? Yeah, huh? I mean, this is what journalists are like nowadays. And I just, and it, anyway, in the film, as, as many of you have seen, Sautner's had this thing, contaminated water, that water is, oh God, the water, the water. The DEP, Pennsylvania DEP went, said the water is fine. Before that, by the way, 1,500 people in Dimmock, Pennsylvania said, the water here is fine. Well, the water here is always crap, is actually what they said. <laughs> Because, clearly, because you are living in a lucky, 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 lucky country, there is so much oil and natural gas down there, it just seeps up. So if you walk on the, on the beach in Santa Barbara, you see, anyone has done that? You've done that? And you get the big black foot on you. And it's not pollution. That's not pollution. That's because they're not taking enough oil out of the ground. Because the enviros think that, oh, stop it, Anne. You know what I mean. Uh, but here's what's great in the film. Craig and Julie Soutner, First of all, 1,500 people in the village said, no, the pro there's no problem with the water. The DEP here said there's no problem with the water, but that wasn't good enough for the Sotners. The Sotners insisted that the EPA come and test their water. Now, the EPA then did test their water. And when they went to give the Sotners the results, very wisely, the EPA decided to film it. And under a Freedom of Information Act, we got to watch the reaction of this lovely couple when they discovered that their water was healthy, that they weren't, you know, that nothing bad was going to happen. They weren't going to get cancer, open sores. Craig wasn't going to stop fancying Julia. <laughs> 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 
and their reaction is extraordinary. Their reaction, one point, um, when they find out that the water is fine, one of the quotes from Craig Sautner is, Bull crap! <laughs> so it's never what they say it's about. Perhaps there was something else there that was actually upsetting him. Maybe it was the fact that he just didn't have that much land. And you know, that would really upset me too. I am going to stop. Am I, what time is it? I can't see anything. I can't see you. I have nine minutes because I want to take questions. But I, um, I've kind of said it all. But listen, and I'll tell you where I'm going today. So I'm running like... Da -da 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 Tomorrow in New York City, Josh Fox, who made Gasland, the, fil the, the film Gasland, has his sequel called Gasland 2 original title, uh, premiering in Tribeca, and I will be there tomorrow with Phelan and about 50 farmers from Pennsylvania. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think we're going to have, I think we're going to have a very interesting time, and I will be sending, actually I'll, I'll be definitely sending Greg the, I'm going to, I'm going to send, the minute I come out, I'm going to send like whatever, the new points he's got. I mean, who knows what he's going to invent now. I mean, can you imagine what this guy did, what Joyce, Josh Fox did? He said that in the Barnett Shale, which is a very heavily fracked area, you know, there's an awful lot of production going on there. He said in that area, breast cancer rates had risen. He said that, you know, everywhere else in America, cancer rates went down, except for in one place, in the Barnett Shale. Now, cancer, you know, cancer gets us all you know, we all get our attention. This is what we don't want. Who wants cancer? Do you want anthrax? No. You don't want, we don't want cancer. And by the way, cancer's natural. Who wants that? I don't want natural. I'm not doing natural. I want the unnatural life. Yeah. I want, I want the artificial hip when I need it. Um, and basically, here's what he says. He, he said cancer rates had risen there. Terrifying people. Absolutely terrifying people. And guess what? He just made it up. He just made it up. And you know, that's why I'm not a socialist anymore. Because I realize that these people will do anything. They will, they will say anything. They, they will say anything. And the really awful thing is that the media let them get away with it. So Kermit Gosnell, that's why I'm talking about Kermit Gosnell. Because the media decided that that's not a story. Trust me, I'm a journalist. That's a story. That's a story. And so, you know, you have to, you have to get busy, guys. I heard people saying that to you this morning already. Here's what I want you to do for me. And by the way, I get very disappointed by doing this with audiences and then they don't do it. <laughs> you need to friend the Frack Nation Facebook page today. And you need to friend my Facebook page today and you need to get yourself a Twitter account and start tweeting. Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga doesn't like fracking and she has 30 million Twitter followers. Katy Perry doesn't like fracking and she has 33 million Twitter followers. You need to get busy, and you need to tweet and tell Josh Fox what you think of his film. Why don't you do that? And by the way, you know something? It makes a difference. People like me tweeted about Kermit Gosnell, and those banks for those journalists, those seats in Philadelphia, are not empty now. You can change the world. You can change the world. You can change the world. And you know something? You know, get off your bottom and do it. Because you know what's really sad? Here in, here in Pennsylvania, you know, it's great, and I'm really happy for the farmers. But in upstate New York, in upstate New York, in the Delaware River Basin area, there is a ban, there is a moratorium on all fracking. Get active and call out liars, because you can change the world. Don't ever believe one person can't change the world. Look what Rachel Carson did. She killed 30 million children by writing a stupid book. Don't believe one person can't change the world. One person can change the world. Be that person. Get busy. Bye bye. <laughs> I'm going to take questions. Thank you. You buy DVD. You need to buy DVDs. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can't see anything. But are there questions? No, I'm going then. Oh, we have. All right. And we have a, uh, Americans for Prosperity wants to give you a, a little award here. Oh. oh. My name is Katie Abram. I'm with Americans for Prosperity. And I have been witness to Ann McElhenney um, at Temple University making the head explode of progressive college students. And it was a beautiful, beautiful sight. <laughs>
In 2010, Americans for Prosperity Pennsylvania um, brought in Ann McElhenney to do an energy tour at college campuses across uh, Pennsylvania, and it, it was quite the honor to be able to get to know Ann. Um, actually, the, the evening that the Sandusky issue broke out at Penn State, Ann was with us that night, and she decided that evening she was going to go out with some of the college students, and I sat in the hotel room watching them flip over uh, vans and stuff. I was so concerned we were never going to see Ann again. <laughs> But with that being said, um, with Americans for Prosperity, we have worked many times with Anne, and it is just amazing. You just heard her. She's a spectacular individual and a spectacular woman. Um, <laughs> with that, I would love to give this, this award to her. With our deep appreciation for your visionary work and undaunted voice, to further the cause of freedom in America, we'd like to present you with the Woman Warrior Award, Ms. Anne McElhenney. Well worth it, and good luck tomorrow with uh, Josh Fox. I hope there will be some great video to come from that.